This week we finish off our adventure in Charleston, South Carolina with a boat trip out to Fort Sumter, plus a potential dealer scam, another one, and some more. This is RV Miles. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean, dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all, to just right layers perfect for changing weather, to sun smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays, every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean, be an outsider. Welcome to episode 198 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. So close to 200 episodes and our four-year mark coming up which just blows my mind. Do you think we'll do something special or will we completely forget well, about it and that, scramble? That. Okay, just wanted uh, to make sure I knew what to expect. Also coming up later this year on our five-year anniversary, our fifth year on the road will be September 1st. There's so much happening this year. We thought 2020 was life-changing. 2021 is doubly life-changing. <laughs> <laughs> this fire, by the way, is really hot behind us. I just want to point that yeah, out. And it's hot outside. This fire behind us yes. is uh, is here to keep bugs away, not to keep us warm. Oh, no. Uh, it's effective at doing the former, uh, but uh, it is more effective at doing the latter, and we're sweating a little bit. Yeah, but. North Carolina, you have brought the little teeny <laughs> tiny bugs, like... You know, last night, I think there were probably, I don't know how they got in because we had the air conditioning on all day. There were probably somewhere between 100 to 150 of them on our ceiling. So interesting. we've been doing a lot of travel lately, a lot of short journeys, but closer together. And there's been a lot of talk in the RV Miles Facebook group and elsewhere about how far people travel in a day. We get asked that every time we do a live stream, how far do we like to travel? So I thought this would be a good time to like go over that again. We've done mm-hmm. it in the past, but let's like talk about, you know, now in this phase of our traveling lives in our fifth year here, what we feel like a good amount for a travel day is as full-timers which in this of course it's different for everyone right yeah this has changed a lot for us over the years we have been enjoying this spring a period of travel where we're only going 50 60 80 100 miles to the next campsite i am loving that before it used to be let's crank out as many miles as possible and you know cover these long stretches of travel going from, you know, one big location kind of to the other. I think that that's the new full timer, you know, all these years later. Now what is so appealing is only traveling for an hour and a half to our next location. Yeah. Now, of course, if we have something scheduled, we have to get somewhere or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes we are booking it. Sometimes we are doing 500 miles in a day, which is not fun. No. Uh, and it's even less fun when you do it two days in a row. But Sometimes it's, you know, leaving the family at Mm -hmm. Christmas in the Midwest and having to get out of a free zone, right? So it involves a a lot of travel. You know, really, though, what we personally try to stay to is nothing more than 300 miles in one day. And if we do 300 miles, then we need to have downtime before we do another 300 miles. You know, one of the things that we say, we always add on 15 minutes per hour that the GPS quotes yeah. us. Yeah, and that includes the RV GPS, by the way. Yes. No adjustment there uh, on, on its <laughs> end for, like, RV driving time. No, <laughs> and then I personally would add another 15 to 20 minutes per person in our RV as well. Yeah, maybe. You know, yeah. I think that there have been times... Bathroom break time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, you know, stopping for fuel. Really what we do try to do, though, is we do try to not have to stop for fuel anymore. We do try to have point A and point B be one tank of gas. Yeah. It's just easier, especially with a gas truck, 
we're not always guaranteed that we're going to have the easiest time getting into a spot and getting fuel. So that's another thing that we do. But I would say that over the five years for us personally, we have really slowed down how far we travel and how often we really like staying in places for longer. That's not something we've been doing a lot right now. And that's partly because we waited too long to find campgrounds. So we had to do what we could get. But all of that comes off the table starting June 1st because we flip this boat around and we're headed back to the Midwest. We're headed back to the family. We have about a thousand miles to cover in two weeks time, yeah. which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you have to factor in two full-time jobs, homeschooling your kids. And we don't want to have more than three travel days within two weeks. That's, I mean, usually right. we don't. We would love if we don't travel more than every two weeks, yeah. right? And then sometimes every every week if we travel, that feels like traveling a lot for us. And longtime listeners are probably going, hey, Abby, have you booked those campgrounds yet for June? And Abby says, no, <laughs> Abby has not. As of, it is what, well, Tuesday? <laughs> we don't know where we're staying on Monday night. <laughs> I will say, I think, I, I do think the biggest thing though for us is not arriving at night and absolutely and it's not scheduling yourself to arrive at five knowing that that's not arriving at night you got to have plenty of time for Mm -hmm. stuff to go wrong so we start to get a little uncomfortable if gps is showing us past like three o'clock because that could lead to us arriving at seven o'clock well what i don't want to have happen because often with the way checkouts and check-ins work we are traveling during the lunch hour and so a lot of times we're, we're stopping now I'm I've, I'm in a period where I'm just not interested in packing lunch. So we're stopping and we're getting lunch. And so that is adding on some time. So the one thing I don't want to do is have us in a situation where we're coming up on dinner time and everyone's hungry and I'm faced with having to potentially spend more money buying another meal out because we just weren't well prepared. So, you know, I feel like a sweet spot for us is arriving around between three and four. Yeah. That's cocktail hour. You know, we get a drink, we get settled in, and then I start dinner or you start dinner. And there's a, a little bit more of a flow. Yeah. And we've really, I think, developed that within the last year and a half. And it, there, it, well, you know what it's been? It's been with moving from the bus to the trailer. Mm-hmm. That has gotten a little bit easier to control. That driving in the truck is a lot more comfortable for us. Yeah, I think some of it too was the lengthy amount of time we spent traveling with friends. Yeah, that too. And also, you know, all of us having the set, we want to get out of here at this time and then having two families that are wanting to get where they're going because the kids are going to want time together. We're all going to want to have a drink. And that really, I think, sort of shaped how we now that we're not with them at this point, how we still continue to travel. Yeah, but there, you know, there really is nothing worse in like a 500 mile day of travel and backing up a trailer in the dark in a campground where mm-hmm. there's no lights for miles and that sort of thing avoid or it when you can you're doing a 500 mile day and it's snowing in new mexico mm-hmm. that was <laughs> that was something <laughs> all right uh we're gonna take a break and when we come back we're gonna have the answer to last week's brain teaser and we're gonna talk about the rest of our journey in Charleston, South Carolina. We'll be right back. FMCA is the world's largest nonprofit RV club, and FMCA members travel with less worry knowing they're covered by FMCA Assist, their medical emergency and travel assistance program. An accident can happen at any time or at any age. What would you do if something happens to you and your spouse can't drive the RV home? How would you transport your children and pets home safely? Other RV clubs and groups charge extra for this type of benefit, but FMCA members get it included with membership. You're covered as long as you're traveling 75 miles from home or more. Full-time RVers are always considered to be 75 miles from home. Here's an example. An FMCA member experienced a medical emergency while wintering in Arizona. He was hospitalized for pneumonia and an irregular heartbeat and his doctor advised that he should not drive home. FMCA assists medical emergency and travel assistance arranged to have one of his family members flown to Arizona in order to drive the RV to the member's home in Iowa. 
FMCA is running a membership promotion that is $60 for one year of membership or $50 for one year of renewal with the code one year. You can save 30% instantly. But hurry, this is a limited time offer and ends July 6th at midnight. RV season is here, but the change of seasons also brings rain, mud, pollen, and other elements that you have to waste your time cleaning or worse that can end up damaging your vehicle. Whether you own a motorhome, a travel trailer, or a truck camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire's just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that help keep just the roof of your RV clean and protect it from UV rays. RV Miles listeners can get free shipping plus an additional 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use the promo code RV Miles at checkout. It's time for the answer to last week's brain teaser, which went like this. Alone I fall to the earth and rise as many in rebirth. Grind and sift and pound me down, I raise again a golden brown. So you may live through my defeat. What am I? The answer is wheat. Good old wheat. <laughs> well, I have a new brain teaser maybe later in the show. Maybe. We don't know yet. We're thinking We're about gonna it. We're going to find out. It's time <laughs> to talk about our the rest of our journey into Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, we had such a good time in the city and it really needed a lot more of our time. We didn't it get did. to do as much as we'd like to. But let's start with the the major thing that we did in Charleston was visit Fort Sumter. Yeah, so we opted to purchase tickets to take the boat out to the island and to visit the fort. Which is the the where the first shots of the Civil War were fired. Yes, and so it's it's pricey. I think we spent probably somewhere around 120 to 130 dollars for our whole family from start to finish. It's about three hours total, about half hour, 45 minutes there. Then you've got about an hour on the island, and then about half hour, 45 minutes back. They ask you to a lot three hours time. Um, I have mixed feelings about this about the experience overall. It has nothing to do with the fort. I found the fort fascinating, has a great visitor center. We did the junior ranger program with the kids, which was a bit rushed, but I don't know. I'm curious, we haven't really talked about it. So I'm just, I'm curious what your thoughts are on it. I guess my big thought about it after, you know, having visited Fort Pickens so many times, Mm -hmm. which is this, so Fort Sumter is, one of these coastal fortifications that was built in the early 1800s and some of them were used for various reasons by various sides in the civil war and fort pickens is definitely a more interesting visit in terms of like the there's a lot more going on at the fort there are more types of rooms yeah. there are they're just it's bigger there mm-hmm. and and it's you know there's no boat ride to get there and, and you have uh, unlimited time out there you know yeah. so Fort Sumter you have that hour um, so in terms of like comparing those two like if you're just going there for like the architecture of these types of forts and you've already been to one of these other coastal forts it, it's not that great of an experience and the whole the whole big thing to me about this is like this is it's holy land this is where the the first shots of the civil war were fired this is yeah a, it's a really big deal um, that, that part of it, 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 I, especially like we're out there the last tour of the day, the Rangers are bringing the flag down and there's mm-hmm. a whole, like, you know, the idea that that flag is flying on that Island is a big deal, right? Yeah. And I completely agree with you on all of that. I think for me, and this is building a little bit on what you were saying is that, Everything felt very, very rushed. And I think that this is what happens when you have a National Park Service site that requires you to take transportation that's not your own to get to it. It felt rushed on the boat. It felt rushed in the fort, even though we were probably the only handful of yeah. people who weren't sitting around waiting yeah, to get back on the Yeah, everybody's waiting boat. to get back on the boat. We're still walking around like, this is amazing. You know, that's the... So I guess well, for most people... Some of that is was junior ranger yeah. driven because yeah. it was 
the one and only time we were coming to the fort. It was the end of the day. In order for us to complete this Junior Ranger booklet, we needed it done before we left the island because we needed the rangers to do the swearing in when we got off the boat. That's the other thing too, because your time is only when you're with children and your time is only so much on the island, much of that booklet needed to be done on the island. So there was this part of me that I think in retrospect, I kind of wish we hadn't done it because I feel like we spent more of our time focused on the book and not focused on learning about the fort. And it wasn't until the very end when we had completed everything. And then we started looking for what I think is some of the most impactful items that you can see at this fort and that there are bricks in this fort with the imprint of small black slave children their fingerprints. They would have to flip the bricks as they were drying. And so all along this fort are little fingerprints from enslaved children. Yeah, and if you're if you're somebody that um, that if is going to be, you know, affected by slavery, obviously, you know, if you're African American or just the the constant reminder of slavery is going to um, really affect you in a way that you don't want to happen. That's tough in Charleston. It's very tough in Charleston. I would challenge you to say that if you're uncomfortable with it, then maybe there's a reason that you need to actually go to Charleston. Well, that and, may, I, and I mean, I don't mean white, that. Yeah. Yes, I sure. do. Yes, <laughs> I do not mean that. I'm only speaking from my yeah. my perspective as a white person. Charleston challenged me. Fort Sumter challenged me. I think in a different way than especially what was in the Junior Ranger booklet. Yeah. But you cannot help but feel that everywhere. And it's very, very important. And I think that that component at the end of the day, when we as a family were walking around, that you and I wanted the kids to see that and to put an actual, it, and we found one. And we placed Henry, Henry's finger perfectly fit. And we said that there was a child your age who was given yeah. no choice but to do this. Yeah, I mean... It you know, and I think, so for me, yeah, that was worth, I think, we're, every bit of money you know, we spent to go out there. We're talking, you know, obviously slavery affected the entire country and particularly the South. But we're talking Charleston as a place where the where the ships arrived. Yes. And that, that Freedom Plaza, I believe, is what it's called, where the Visitor Center is. That, that, yes. Where, where they arrived is where you... Yes. where you go to the visitor center for Fort Sumter. And that is an incredibly important piece of history. It's it's holy ground. It's sacred ground because so many lost their lives there. And that was really important when we arrived to share that information with our boys and to make sure that they treated this space with the reverence that it deserved. This site, outside of just being a fort and being the important first shots of the Civil War, also really allows for some very important discussions about choices we made in this country that were horrific. I have to tell you that I have been feeling that way about junior ranger programs <laughs> oh, no. for, for our one day National Park Service site visits for a yeah. while. It's, it's taken up our entire visit and it's, it's not about, you know, like we want to have the kids do something that shows that they've learned something yeah. but I feel like sometimes I feel like it's taken away from the learning I think maybe the answer to that is you know they feel a little bit sometimes like Pokemon gotta catch them yeah. all right and I think maybe now what the answer really is is these one days are we come home we still do them we mail them in we have them yeah, sent to a grandma and grandpa's should. house and then the other ones we can keep with us the boys feel a sense of pride Jack is starting to age out of these, and that is also becoming a struggle. I wish that these booklets would advance themselves for our teenagers. Yeah, because you have them do a, you know, a teenager do a maze that's right. that's meant for for six yeah. year olds to be able to do. That's you know. Well, there's so much in there for him to learn, and he even, I mean, he we got a lot of pushback from him that day on this booklet, and his he was pleading, if I go around and read every single thing in this visitor center, can I not absolutely. do the booklet? Absolutely. <laughs> but you, you're not going to do that, but absolutely. Well, you know, 
<laughs> benefit of the doubt. But <laughs> yes, I mean, but I think that, you know, there's a real um, educational opportunity that's being missed because these booklets, we're not, we're not giving him booklets and they're saying up to 12. These booklets are saying 12 and older, you have to do everything in the booklet. And everything in the booklet is designed for our preschoolers up to, I would argue, our 10, 11 year olds. They're not designed for 12 and older. So I, you know, I just think there's a missed opportunity yeah. there with to really make an impact on some of our older kids in really meaningful ways, especially at a place like Fort Sumter. All right. Well, we got to spend a decent amount of time in downtown Charleston as well. And uh, and we went to several different restaurants. I don't think we're going to cover any of those no. because none of them were just so outstanding that we need to talk about them. The beer is really good the beer in is Charleston. Good. The, I, the I will give that. The barbecue is good. The beer is good. Mm-hmm. The, the, the whiskeys are good. The lots of liquor selections that are Y'all, the alcohol is great. Fantastic. Alcohol is great in Charleston. But we did get to spend some time at the Charleston City Market, mm-hmm. which is a big sort of open air market that is you know full of people hawking their wares all these wonderful sweet grass baskets that are Beautiful. so popular uh, down in Charleston but we did have one food item in the in the the market that I think is important to talk about from Callie's hot little biscuit <laughs> this is a it's a stand that sells biscuits um, in the market, like, like in the enclosed area, air conditioned, they have their own yeah. dedicated kiosk. Gourmet biscuits, like fancy, like so. We had we we had a peanut butter and jelly one, mm-hmm. uh, and then we had a strawberry shortcake. Yes, and they were out of this world. That strawberry shortcake <laughs> biscuit was my jam. If I could eat that every single day, I would. I want to mention too about Charleston. Um, There is an incredible wealth of history, and we did dig into that a little bit, but not in the context that it makes a lot of sense for the podcast. But I would encourage anyone who is going to Charleston to really try and find all of these stops in the downtown area with the history. It's incredibly rich. There's a dungeon downtown. I could have spent weeks there and probably not have learned everything about the city. It's it's so rich in the beginning of our country, the you know, the growing of our country. So I loved that about Charleston. I want us to go back. We really enjoyed The campground we talked about a couple episodes ago at James Island, we enjoyed this campground we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Um, And the city market is incredibly fascinating, Um, you know, during what I still consider a a time of social distancing. I highly recommend, you know, going during the week if you can in the off hours. The weekends are crazy busy packed. Yeah, it, 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 but it is a great place to get like gifts and stuff, and um, and just to see local artists yeah. because everyone who has a booth is a local artist. There's also it's very popular to take carriage rides down there. Oh yes, and the the carriage it's not like not like four person carriages. These are like carriages yeah. that hold like it's a tour of you know yeah. twenty people get on a carriage and 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 go around town and that this kind of the way you know like on New York you might get in New York you might get in a double decker bus and tour around New York. It's kind of that that's what yeah. you do behind a horse in in Charleston. But we should move on cuz we are losing light we and should. we have lost our fire. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh let's wrap up Charleston with talking about the campground we stayed at, which was called Buck Hall Recreation Area and this is a National Forest campground. And uh it's right on the uh, Intercoastal Waterway where lots of boats are coming up and, and down, but it's protected by some barrier islands mm-hmm. from the ocean. So we had just this lovely spot where we could see the water. We could see all the boats going by, lots of small ones, lots of very big ones. An eclectic mix of boats, fishing boats, sailboats, recreational boats. I mean, all day long, barges. It was you know, the Coast Guard. You know, we were on a national forest, and then right across the water was a national seashore. Yeah, there's also a, uh, a wildlife preserve mm-hmm. right there as well. So um, I absolutely recommend we stayed in site number one. Yeah. We loved our site. Water and electric at the site. Nice big sites. A small campground too. Probably only 20 to 25 sites total. Yeah. So it was never busy in the campground. 
That said, the parking lot, the boat ramp, and was the boat very, ramp, very, very busy. Yes, are very close to your campground. So on the weekends, especially, that place was just hopping and it was busy. And they also rent out the pavilion that's over there, so that can also be busy. But this campground is right on the the beginning. I believe it's the beginning of the Palmetto Trail, which runs through. Yeah, uh, or the end. I, depends or the or on, the end, which depends runs on which way you're going, all the way up to in, into North Carolina, where. Where we were, where we stayed at that campground that in Asheville, I, in, that near Asheville. had great Wi-Fi that we cannot remember the name of right now, but it was <laughs> Orchard, fantastic. Orchard Lake. Orchard right? Lake, good um, job. So it's it's a long, big trail. It, it's not complete, so you can't do the whole thing. But mm-hmm. it was it's actually really nice down here at this recreation area where there's like boardwalks and or you know so, soft pine needles covering the very wide yeah. trail. And I enjoyed lots of walks on it. You're your snake phobia kept you off it <laughs> uh, yes quite a bit but. it is removed from charleston you are not in the heart of it like you yeah. were at james island it's about a 45 minute drive into downtown but you are on the outskirts of mount pleasant and mount pleasant south carolina is a nice very, suburb very town nice they had a barnes and noble which you know we love barnes and noble so we <laughs> we hit that up there was a trader joe's i was happy about that too and it's just a really beautiful it was a nice quiet two week the very very the best part about Buck Hall, however, was dolphins. There were dolphins swimming in this channel in front of us, and oh my it gosh. was amazing. Amazing. And we did not know that this was something that could happen, and you and I were actually stepping out to record a video, and we were going to use the water as the backdrop. And we're like, oh, it's dolphins. And so it, we did never did a video no. with the dolphins in the background. We should but have. It was, you know, three, four, or five dolphins. A good, I don't know if you call that a family or a group or i'm not quite sure what the oh somebody's gonna school us on what a group of dolphins is that's called that's fine school me on it i'm not calling i'm no, not I, 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 don't, I don't remember this is, i should know listen I should this know. is not a canadian geese <laughs> versus sandhill crane so don't come at me like that oh okay? i don't mean it like that no <laughs> i'm just saying uh, but it was really a, a very special time and really quiet after the very very busy week at james island to come over to buck hall for a couple of weeks and chill out really absolutely enjoyed it All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, our fresh tank, black tank segment and the new brain teaser, maybe, maybe not, probably not. (laughs) We'll be right back. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV. And the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector made by Hughes Autoformers beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. But the Power Watchdog, it can be brought back to life with one small affordable part that you can replace yourself. They'll even give you a free surge module in the first two years. And now they have a limited lifetime warranty. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at Hughes autoformers.com that's rv miles for 10 percent off at hughes autoformers.com travel season is upon us and along with all the fun travel planning you will unfortunately have to plan for the not so fun stuff like an rv tire blowout if you're driving down a major highway you hear a loud explosion you might have just had a high speed blowout your nerves would be shot and you try to remember what kind of tire protection you have when you have an rv tire blowout or a flat Many tire and wheel programs deal with it through a reimbursement. The RVer has to source an appropriate tire, find a tow truck to take them to the shop, or find someone who can change it on the side of the road, and then pay for these services up front in the hopes of a timely reimbursement. CoachNet's Hazard Protect is sign and drive coverage. If you experience a blowout on your RV due to a road hazard, you only need to call CoachNet and then sign for services rendered. CoachNet takes care of the rest. That's what CoachNet and their vision of carefree RVing is all about. Simplicity for the customer in an extremely stressful situation. CoachNet Hazard Protect is the RVer's best option to handle an RV tire blowout. Hazard Protect can be purchased through a CoachNet participating dealer, or you can request a quote at cn.rvmiles.com. That's cn.rvmiles.com. It is now time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? I don't have one. No? no I have nothing. Nothing, nothing bad happened? No, it's been a good week. All you right. know, we enjoyed a really nice time in Myrtle Beach. And now we have come over to this beautiful campground here. 
and I got nothing. All right. What is in your fresh tank then? (laughs) So my fresh tank goes to the grocery store just down the street from here called Lowe's Food. Anyone from the South, Southeast is probably very familiar, but this was the first time I had ever been into one. And I was kind of blown away with the wine, coffee, beer bar that's in the center. And then they have all of these, you know, you can go get your chicken or your smokehouse or your seafood or your sandwiches and all these sort of pre-made little shops that you can stop off on. A bake shop. Oh, their baked goods looked phenomenal. And it wasn't crazy expensive. The minute I walked in, I thought, "Uh uh-oh, maybe I should have driven down to the Walmart supermarket. But no, it wasn't bad. But I really love this idea that grocery stores sometimes kind of make going there a little bit of an experience. Um, I certainly wish we were going to be here longer because I would be doing a major grocery shop and I would absolutely sit down for a beer before I continue shopping. And I just, I thought it was kind of cool. So they get my fresh tank this week for being just a little bit different and encouraging me to want to go back. I went and bought sandwiches for us it's tonight. It's kind of like uh, Mariano's in Chicago where people oh. would start, people started having dates <laughs> at Mariano's. You go to the wine bar and you have your first date there. So you're like. <laughs> well, and do you remember too, Mariano's used to have a piano player. Yeah. So this yeah. was the only thing missing from Lowe's. They did have this giant chicken that like is up in the ceiling. And today when I was there. He was set off. I I don't know what triggers. Set off. Like, I don't know what triggers him, but he started talking like, oh, welcome to Lowe's, clock, clock, clock. And I don't know if it was, oh. That doesn't fit the vibe at all that you told me about. No, it it was like fancy because they they are a farm. (laughs) Okay, they're farm fresh. I gotcha. And a farm fresh rotisserie chickens were just coming out of the oven. And this giant mechanical chicken was clucking and the, he was singing and people in the store were clapping like the employees they have to do a, a dance with it that's i did have to, oh my yeah i did have to say uh into alan the employee there who was in it to win it on that song sir <laughs> you are a master craftsman uh i would have had to been like i cannot work here if you know, you're going to make me do this. It's the equivalent of having to sing the happy birthday yeah, song at, as a server yeah. that I would always be like, oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. I just got sad. I can't. I can't. I'll just be over here. So. <laughs> anyway, Jason, what is in your black tank this week? My black tank is something that I'm hearing about a little bit in some Facebook groups. That, and, uh, this is something where people are being caught at it in Facebook groups. Um, caught? There's this thing that that some dealers are doing right you know right now a lot of people have ordered rvs hold on i need to sit back and get my popcorn let's I go think you need to be closer to the light because we don't have a lot of light here we're <laughs> running out of light sorry uh we gotta get this wrapped up we rode we're, we're under the light of our, a laptop computer right now but l- there are a lot of people have orders out for rvs right now right and mm-hmm. they have may have bought they may have ordered them four or five months ago, more, you know, they may have ordered them a year ago if it's a motor home. And what I'm hearing stories of happening is some dealers, if you're, say your motor home, your class B motor home that you've Mm -hmm. been waiting on for, you know, 15, 16 months is Mm -hmm. done. Maybe, maybe they're selling that motor home (gasps) on their lot for more money than you agreed to pay for it. And, and they moved you later down in the order line. Shut and the front door. A, a few you dealers serious? have been literally caught in Facebook groups doing this because people will say to each other, yeah, I bought that same unit from that same dealership two months earlier than you. Hmm. What did you pay? And it turns out more. So, you know, unfortunately, and I think most dealers are not doing this type of thing, but it is something to look out for in if you have a, an RV on or on order, Mm-mm. you need to be constantly on that dealer. You, you need to be that person that's calling every week just to check in about your delivery date. You need to be annoying. I can't. I I can never be that person. I do not physically have the ability to be that person. We but, have some family members who could be that. But person But that's for the us. person that's going to get their <laughs> motor home. Yes, and that other person, which would be us. Would be waiting another six months. Yeah. That is 
disgusting and I really feel is. really bad for those people. Yeah. But this is a warning. People talk. Okay. And the power of the internet is strong. It is. So be real careful when you start pulling shady stuff like that because you're going to be found out. <laughs> Just, all right, what's exactly. in your fresh tank? Uh, my fresh tank is that I have not used. Oh, no. I have not used shampoo for one month. One month I, I have not used. Now, listen, this, so this came about, I, I can't remember. Can I'll, you just please, before you go on, yeah. though, let everyone know that you are showering. No, no. I I, I rinse my hair. I just have not been using okay. shampoo. I just and, needed you to clarify yeah. that, yes, you are showering on a regular basis totally. and washing your body. Yes. You're just not taking soap to your hair. This came about because of a random YouTube video I watched with a guy a guy that had stopped using shampoo. And he hadn't been using it for a year. And to be honest, his hair looked a little dirty. But, <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. But mine has not. And a lot no. of people do not. And it's, this is not something that's going to work for everybody. But Abby didn't know about this. No, when he told me his secret, his secret, I was shocked. And the, the thing is that for a lot of people, again, it's not going to work for everybody. But when you use shampoo, that gets rid of all the oil, mm -hmm. right? Which just causes your scalp to make more oil. So you're overproducing oil. And my hair has not been greasy or dirty because of it. And it's been fantastic because we have not been on full hookups for quite yeah. a while. And I use so little water when I take a shower right now. I normally, I think half of the water is for washing your hair. You're a Renaissance man, Jason. I, it, it, look, I think it's worth trying. And I, it, I actually, my scalp doesn't itch as much as it did before. It's, it's great. Now I, I'm still <laughs> like I think I'm gonna probably get. I'll probably wash my hair like once a month. But I mean, you think think about it. People in like the 40s, they didn't wash their hair every day. Nobody no. washed their hair every day back then. I, I mean, my my grandmother, I I don't think she still does this anymore. But up until very recently, my grandmother was getting her hair done once a week at the mm -hmm. hairdresser, and. And that was, you know, when you get your hair washed and all that. Mm, grandma Alice cover it up at yep. night and then she just uncover it during the day. My other grandma who's passed away a few years ago used to wrap her head in toilet paper to keep her hair. She would not have survived <laughs> the 2020 TP. We have to right, go though because it's dark. it is dark. It's dark. We are literally, in, for those watching on YouTube, we are literally entirely yes. lit by a laptop screen and right now. I would like it recorded here for all time that I said that this was going to happen and somebody else was like, no, 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 we're going to get through it and we'll be fine. I, I don't need to get out ring lights. I don't need to put but up any lights. But that was before lights. we moved everything, no. we changed, we just lit mm -mm. the fire and mm -mm. then you talked a lot. I then... just, I want it, <laughs> don't talk to me. You just went on for 20 minutes about how you don't wash your hair. I just want it recorded here for all of you that this lighting issue falls to the lighting designer in this family. <laughs> all right. All We're right. not going to do a brain, no brain teaser, teaser. We really gotta go. for this reason. Uh, so wrap this up, Abby. I will, and I'm wrapping it up quick. You know the drill. We would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing that. RV Miles is all across social media. And if you want to chat with Jason and I, we are over in the RV Miles Facebook group. And hey, don't forget, if you're shopping Amazon, please shop Amazon with RV Miles. You can find a link in the show notes at rvmiles.com slash 198. Or just go to amazon.com slash shop slash RV Miles. Until next week, be well, stay safe, and keep logging those RV Miles. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>